Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Manette Riordan. and this is Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette. I am here at 7 a.m. Mountain Time, Monday to Thursday, and some Fridays. Tomorrow, I think I'm going to be sleeping in a little bit. I don't know about you, but time changes definitely always have an impact, and I'm looking forward to maybe lingering a little longer in the warmth of my bed in the morning and I say that and I'll probably be wide awake at five o'clock so I'm putting some gesso down on a visual journal page here to get me started and I left a big pile of that as I started to put that down and realize that oh it's seven o'clock it's time to get starting started so if you're brand new to painting in your PJs live with Manette I love using art and creative process and practice as a tool for self-exploration and st visual storytelling and a way to kind of get to the core and the center of what's going on with me. I do this in online programs. I do it in art retreats in my beautiful studio in Loveland, Colorado. And I also work privately one-on-one -on -one with people in my Emerge program who are feeling lost, stuck, looking for new ways to kind of understand and find meaning in their life, to reconnect to their purpose. I absolutely love the work that I do and feel incredibly lucky that I get to make art every single day. And I hear so often that it's hard to find time, it's hard to find the space, we get really busy. But here's the thing for me that I discovered and that really came from having a super consistent creative practice. And what I discovered by having a super consistent creative practice is that I can't live without art making, that I get grumpy if I go a few days without making art. And this was a pretty profound shift in my life when I really made art the center of everything that I do. This became something that was so, so important to me. And I'm happy to be here sharing my process and my views on this with all of you in the mornings or whenever it is that you're watching the replay. I would ask that if you like what I share in these videos that we would please click that like button so you can help me spread the word to other people about what we're doing here on Painting in Your PJs Live. And if you love it to hit the subscribe button so that you can get notified when new content is added. And today I want to talk about mindfulness on the page and how I view creative expression and creative play as a form of active meditation in a way of creating really mindful moments on the page. And today I want to do that by painting and doing some slow stitching on fabric and looking at some creative ways that I can add pieces that I slow stitch to my visual journal pages. So sometimes art for me is about the storytelling, and sometimes it simply is, wow, life has been really busy and full. I was at an event in Denver last night, didn't get home and into bed until late, so I can feel like I'm a little, you know, sleepy this morning. And what I need is just a little bit of just mindful, creative expression and play on the page. So I want to do a little painting on fa fabric, maybe a little stamping. Um, create some little mini collages and do a little bit of slow stitching and we're just going to follow the journey as always and see where we get to on the page. So I'm going to switch my camera here and you can see where I've been gessoing this page this morning. All right. So I want to go back and show you kind of where I have started with this journal, give you a little bit of the of the journey here. I'm going to clean up some of these paints from yesterday off my desk so I have a little more space for working on here. So I'm working in this beautiful old magazine, and I just gessoed those pages so they're still a little bit damp. This is a hardbound book. 
that was an actual magazine called Horizons. And it's interesting, it has newsprint in the back as well as glossy pages and crazy photos and interesting articles and often interesting retrospectives of different artists. And so it felt like a perfect book. And I bought it for 25 cents at a used bookstore that I love. Look at that little tiny strawberry and these gorgeous, looks like maybe egrets. No, they're spoonbills taking off their beautiful, some beautiful old photographs. So some of these photos I will just leave in the, the journal as they are. But it's a great and fun process to repurpose or upcycle an old book into something new. So I painted the cover, leaving this really fun image on the cover because I love this sort of sense of adventure. And so I'm thinking of this journal the theme for the journal as my adventure journal. And I started off the week this week by just doing an abstract creative play. I really loved how this page came out. I drew an oracle card and we ended up with a um, dragonfly and a page that was all about change. Good morning, Marion. And yesterday I had a lot of different pieces that were floating around and there was a fascinating story that evolved in the pages yesterday. First, this beautiful labyrinth and this idea of deep in love. This is a, a magazine image of the author and speaker Gabby Bernstein in this beautiful meditation. And so this whole story evolved around, we have to go within, I have to go within my own stillness to reconnect to self-love and find the truth of who I am. And uh, I had to cover up the, there was a scary minotaur in the center of the labyrinth. I love the, the myth of the minotaur and realizing that it can be scary to travel within our own selves really deep. And sometimes we might be afraid we're going to get lost and not get back, but we're always going to have that thread attached to our heart. And so I did some journaling on this page, which was not my intention for the page was to do some journaling good morning Yvonne but that this would have been the partner page to this one and that's not what ended up sort of emerging when I sat down um, overnight to finish this so I started showing this one yesterday so I had a lot of fun adding texture so I loved this picture of this lion roaring this is a fun paper napkin this is a piece of burlap and a piece of fabric. And I have added some just little bits of stitching. I actually stapled the burlap to the fabric to hold it in place. Staples are a really fun way to add layers and quickly get things attached in your journal. And then for now, I have just used my glue stick and I have glued this uh, piece of fabric in here on three sides only. You guys know I love, love, love making pockets. So I have a little secret pocket here where I could tuck some things away in this journal. And I am going to take my sewing machine to make that just adhere a little bit better because that glue stick won't last forever, right? And I don't want it to, to rip off. So I'm probably going to go ahead and take my sewing machine and sew right into my journal around the edges of those pages. And I love the lions. So the story that emerged yesterday was this idea of I have to deepen love with myself by going within and only by going within can I find my roar again. And I love this lion, the light shining right on his face and he's sort of proudly just roaring, right? And so this, there was this contrast between the inside and then the external expression of my own voice. And I have to go within before I can come without. And so I think there's going to be some more journal writing here on this page. And I went ahead and have gessoed a couple of more pages. And they're pretty wet. So I'm going to thank you, Avon. Like I'm always fascinated by the story that emerges, right? And, I, and that I never know where I'm going in the beginning. But what I wanted to do this morning was maybe play with some fabric and see how we can just find some of that mindfulness through fabric and slow stitching 
If you don't have some of these things on hand, then please grab your own art journal and play and paint along. So I have a little silhouette of a cat I was using for my 100 Days of Artsy Animals that would make a really fun kitty cat on fabric to applique. I also really love, oh, and there's another little kitty cat, a little black cat as well. So I just grabbed a pile of things that were floating around. These were little just um, quilt squares that my daughter and I got for a project, and these are left over. And um, I th we either got them at Michael's or Joann's. They often have little bundles of like little bits of fabric. And so these were all a batik set. And I really love these colors. I've used them over and over. I even love the flowers. So sometimes when you're working in these spirals, look at these gorgeous spirals. You know I love spirals. So if I wanted to simply just do some mindful stitching on a piece of fabric, I could use the pattern in the fabric as a guide and just add some stitching directly on to the page. But I really love making kind of a variety of little pieces put together in some different ways and the same way I would work with paper just starting to work with some collage and just starting to maybe put some pieces together that we're just going to add some simple little stitching to today and I love all of these colors and then I also have just a couple of solid colors I have a bright green and this is a nice navy blue with a lot of stringy bits on it and I actually really love painting on fabric as well and so this was sitting with the fabric this is a handmade foam stencil so I'm going to take just a little bit of gesso and I want to play with just this little square pattern and get some squares down on the fabric and then maybe do some stitching on this fabric as well I think um, what I was thinking this morning, again, was just about this mindful play. I also have a couple of just inexpensive embroidery hoops. These are great to have if you enjoy slow stitching. Sometimes I'm working on such small pieces, they don't fit in an embroidery hoop. But when they do, I actually really enjoy it. I also grabbed part of one of my son. Connor's Sacred Circle Designs from our Mindful Patterns membership, and I love this affirmation, which this is a good one. Right now we're running Facebook ads to our color-coded emotions next live iteration of that, and it's stressful running Facebook ads. Like It's a lot of money going out, testing. It takes time to, to, to find the ad and get them working. And I notice that I get some anxiety, maybe have a little trouble sleeping. I'm, you know, anxiously watching and, and waiting and looking at what's happening. And this was the affirmation from this particular sacred circle. At this moment, I will breathe and be happy. And it's true. At this moment, everything is fine. Nothing is wrong. At this moment, I will breathe and be happy. So I might do some stitching through paper into this guy as well and really love all these colors coming together. And so sometimes when we start to put all these things together, already there's a nice color story emerging here. Good morning, Judy. I could even add more fabric on top of here. And so I start to just have some fun piecing some of these things together. Again, the idea, the story that's emerging is this, at this moment, I will breathe and be happy. This is the reminder that I need today, that right now, nothing is wrong. Everything is okay. And sometimes I want to just say, in this moment, all I need is just to breathe. Just to breathe. I don't think we can force happiness. I actually want it to say, at this moment, I will breathe and be present because I think that's, you know, the sometimes it's the best we can ask of ourselves. I actually feel pretty happy this morning. I'm a little sleepy. Um, 
but I'm just sitting with the thoughtfulness of this affirmation. I will breathe and be happy. I will breathe and be present. It's very much almost like a meta meditation. May you be happy. May you be safe. And at this moment, I will breathe and be happy. I will breathe and be present. And because this is inspiring some words, I might first go to my journal page and add some words. And I'll do that later, because otherwise we will be here all day long. So I'm, I'm loving what's starting to emerge here already and putting some of these different things together. Some of these bigger pieces, I do love to run through a sewing machine, and that's about all I can do is run a straight stitch around things. I don't really um, know how to sew, not really interested in learning, but I do love being able to stitch things together. <clears throat> so we bought just a inexpensive starter sewing machine for my daughter and I to play with last year. So I feel that story is coming together. I'm also really loving these flower patterns on this batik piece. But I want to start by maybe having a little bit of fun with some patterns and shapes on this page. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just use gesso because it's here on the table. And I think my white paint is over on the other table. And I am going to find a makeup sponge, snipping the tip off of this so that I can repurpose it. And I didn't talk in my found objects class about fabric, but all the fun found object things that I teach in that class could be done on printed on fabric as easily as they could on paper. But I love sort of the, the softness of that look. I'm trying not to, you know, overdo this with paint. I'm trying to kind of more or less line those up. But I think we forget that we can use fabric as a substrate just like we can paper. And remember yesterday I was, or maybe it was the day before, I don't remember anymore, I was talking about exploring and experimenting with different surfaces or substrates, like with different things to paint on. So we tend to paint on paper a lot. I love painting on wood. And I love painting on fabric. So that's kind of fun. It kind of looks like a brick wall. There's a little more paint on there than I think. So again, creating my own collage materials using what I have at hand. And I think I still have some of these other fun things that I was using in the found objects class lying around. And the link to that class is in the description below this video. So this is a piece of cardboard wrapper from a coffee cup. I love coffee. And so I often have these wrappers lying around. And this particular one is ribbed on the inside. Any piece of ribbed cardboard would work well. And I'm just kind of playing here on fabric just like I would on paper to see what kind of marks and texture can I create. And then we'll see what other fun things we might be able to do with this fabric. So all of a sudden now, instead of just this plain blue fabric, I have some nice patterns and texture on my fabric. I'm really loving this little piece and this little piece, and I think, you know, if I cut these out, I have some interesting things going on. Also in the found objects class, one of the tips I shared, I wanted to share with all of you is the benefit of using a little viewfinder as well. So when we create a mixed media collage piece, a background, um, you know, different papers, and we're looking at the whole going, well, that looks kind of messy. But if I come in with this viewfinder, then I can find these little 
bits and pieces that I love. And so these are the pieces that'll get cut out or saved or used for other things. So a viewfinder can be a really great tool for looking at your pages. It's also great for if you go out for a nature walk and you want to do some thumbnail sketches, you can use a little viewfinder like this to look through instead of a camera to sort of capture a piece of the landscape, a piece of the landscape. And I'm looking at this and seeing some of this, these open squares too, and I'm thinking maybe I want to put some of those open squares. So this was a foam stamp that I created just with fun foam, sticky back fun foam. And I cut out the squares. So these were the insides that I cut out and these were the outsides that I cut out. So I love making stamps out of foam. They last forever. So that's a fun, really interesting pattern as well. And even this makeup sponge, this one's a little jackety at the moment, can create a really interesting pattern. So getting a little more thicker white paint on there. So now I have just some interesting patterns on this page that I can respond to. I had a piece, this was actually a shirt that I cut up that I got for two bucks at a thrift store, which is a, another great way to get fabric is old clothes. And I kind of loved this. It's a beautiful Paisley shirt, but kind of liking how maybe those pieces are coming together. And I'm almost thinking it would be fun to create some kind of little banner out of this. So again, I'm just looking for things to respond to. And somewhere in my studio, I have really nice fabric scissors. These are not them. These are my nice paper scissors, but I do tend to keep a separate pair of paper scissors or fabric scissors around that are not allowed to touch paper or get near matte medium. I also really love tearing fabric, and this is just a little 100% cotton muslin, so it tears and you get really lovely edges on things. I love the little bits and strings that come off of them. Other people don't, and that's fine. So I'm going to start to play just like I would with paper and start to put some of these pieces together and see what I can create. So this is like just sort of stretching the boundaries of what you might normally think about doing in a visual journal page with paint and paper and looking at how could you recreate that maybe with some fabric pieces. And let's see. I also love this turquoise. And at first I thought maybe it was going to be kind of like a banner like this one, but I'm kind of feeling like this is kind of fun going this way. It's feeling like doors and windows, so maybe there's a story emerging here around doors and windows, and that story isn't quite 100% clear yet. And if I bring in this piece, then I really have that sense of a little house emerging even, maybe. Okay, that's kind of fun, and it does kind of feel like a house, and I could even come in and trim the edges of these pieces as if they were a flat roof of the house, and there's always things to be explored when we go through doors and windows. And now I'm torn between do I want to work on that piece or do I want to work on this piece? And I think I'm going to set this one aside for now, but I wanted to just show you how to do some painting on the fabric and I want to come in with this one 
and I'm trying to decide if I want the background. I think I want the background to be this beautiful turquoise. And I'm going to go ahead and put the turquoise into my embroidery ring here just to kind of hold it a little bit still. The paper does not work. I don't, it does not work at all. Mm, maybe I could add Ganesha, um, a collage image of Ganesha to the background of that page with the house. I love that. I did not know I, that Ganesha was protector of open spaces. Love that. And yes, I'm loving that as well. So if I came back in with a little bit of this playful green on here, we would have kind of a whole landscape emerging. I love batiks too, Judy. Absolutely love them. And I'm a hippie at heart. I could wear all of these colors and fabrics. So, okay. So what I want to do is to make a note. So when I have fun ideas like this, so I want to go look for an image of Ganesha. I want to add some green for landscaping. So I often make notes of ideas that get shared, right? Or um, if I have an idea, if I wake up in the middle of the night with an idea and I don't have time to, to act on it, then I will definitely okay that isn't quite going to work the way i want it you guys are going to get to see me kind of figure this out here for a second so i need a much bigger embroidery hoop which i have somewhere in the studio but don't need to go find right now so lots of fiddling and fussing so one thing i'm going to do first is i'm just going to glue stick this little bit of orange to the center here so that my pieces aren't just sort of falling around. And I'm just doing the glue right in the, in the center of that piece, not all over that piece. Straighten up that edge just a tiny bit. These are quite dull scissors. I'm just sort of tacking that down so it'll make it a little bit easier to do some stitching. And then I'm also going to tack down this affirmation as well. And so sometimes I love creating these types of pieces very much like I did with the lion. And then the whole piece of fabric will get stitched or glued into my journal. I'm kind of also liking because my journal pages are pretty big. What if we added a little silhouette of our kitty cat on here? That might be interesting as well. So I definitely want to have some of that blue showing and you know cats they just are happy right like except for Diego when he wants to be fed and then he's just annoying as all get out but I love this idea of be more like a cat so if we add the cat to the story we have a whole new story emerging and then this whole piece can get added into my page and so rather than a painty background all of a sudden, we have this beautiful fabric becomes the background of the page. And so sometimes it's a, a simple way to get the page together. And I think I do want to go ahead and get this whole piece stuck down here so it's not flopping around. And I probably won't stitch the over the top of that affirmation. And I am going to grab some nice blue thread here, find my needle from yesterday. And I like having a variety of sizes of needles, but I do tend to work with um, a pretty large needle unless I'm working on something really fine but it helps with the poking through the paper to have a little bit larger needle. It's also a lot easier for me to thread.
and I'm using the whole skein of embroidery floss, <laughs> multi-pod kitty Ganesha, I love that. Or the um, the Asian, the good luck kitty that's always sitting with its, with its paw up. That would be another great one to include here. And so I'm going to use some of the patterns and lines that are in this sacred circle design as my guide for stitching. And I might even, so working on paper is interesting. Now I don't want to be stitching through wet glue stick because that will just gum up your needle. And that's why yesterday I stapled the burlap. It's hard to use straight pins. Normally, if you were stitching on something like this, you would use, I really want to keep that flower and that flower. Um, if I were using all fabric, I would use just some straight pins to tack pieces together, like the, the house piece, I might use straight pins. But because I'm working on paper, it adds too many holes to the paper. So sometimes just that little spot of glue, or even I could come and add a little washi tape to the edges of this would be another great way to just tack this to the, to the fabric, especially if that glue stick doesn't want to hold. And once we get going, it will be fine. And it's so easy to just do a simple running stitch. Get that started on here. I know this is probably a little hard to see. Let me move my camera down just a little bit. I know, sorry for the shakiness there. Bear with me. It gets grumpy when I move it. But we can just use a simple running stitch. Our stitches do not have to be fancy, right? Like there's lots of incredibly beautiful embroidery out there. But this is more to me like Zentangle where I want to just be in the mindfulness of the stitching. I don't need it to take days and hours and again this is just being able to slow down do something a little bit different I love slow stitching like my coloring of these sacred circle designs is often that mindful activity I do in the evenings upstairs where I can't paint And so just allowing ourselves some time to be with the paper, to be with the fabric, to get a little creative, making sure I'm not stitching all my pieces together. I haven't cut this yet because I don't know what size I want it to be until I hold it to the page, so I'm keeping that a little bit bigger there. And I think it's really starting to think beyond the page. My friend Andrea and I did a super fun retreat last year called Beyond the Page where we looked at, you know, what are the things we can add to the surfaces of our art journal pages? That it doesn't always have to just be paper and paint or collage. And so sometimes I just get these urges to see if we can do a little faster running stitch in there without totally destroying the paper. So I'm working, this is a piece of cardstock, so it's pretty sturdy. It's still pretty easy to stitch through, but it's definitely not as flexible like as the magazine images or the, the fabric. So I'm you know mindful of not completely wrinkling that page. So you can see I'm just adding that simple stitch, which adds visual interest to this sort of plain sacred circle that I colored. We're going to just zip around this pretty quickly. And I can see I'm going to have a, a lot of fun with this one. I'm going to get it started. And I definitely want to come in and add more stitching. And oftentimes when I color these sacred circle designs with colored pencil, I love going back over them with Posca or Microns and adding more marks and patterns to them. Well, this is the same practice. I'm just doing it with needle and thread instead of with paint or marker. So 
look at your materials that you have lying around and think about what could you do or add differently. And I'm curious while I'm over here stitching away, what are other people working on this morning? Are you coloring, painting, watching along? <laughs> I love it, going through your batiks today. Yes, there's so much fun, so many fun things that we can do. And, we, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I have stashes of stuff in my studio that tend to pile up. And so I look for different ways to combine and create them. Still working on your sketchbook. I love that. I definitely this weekend want to try making Allie's Traveler's Journal. So if you haven't heard about or soul collage card, ooh, the unseen, I love that. If you have not heard or seen about the sketchbook revival, it's a fun, free, I think it's a 30-day, lots of artists. And uh, this year, Allie Manning from the Handmade Book Club shared a really fun video um, on creating a traveler's journal. And I love traveler's journal because the insides are removable and you can add more pieces to them. So you can look on the internet or Instagram for the sketchbook revival. Soul Collage has been coming up a lot around me lately, Marion, and so I'm thinking it might be time to dig back into my own soul collage practice. Just watching, Yvonne, awesome. What will you be painting later today? And I'm always looking for ways to bring more mindful moments into my days, into my creative practice, and always looking for how I can integrate mindfulness, spir spirituality, and creativity together because that's what serves me the best with the, the limited time that I do have to play and create and meditate and do all the things that I want to do, the more I can use my art making as a way to breathe and be present, the better I feel, the better I feel. A class on acrylics, brilliant. Yeah, for sure, I do that, I do that often. And, um, you know, at the beginning of this video, I, I was, the stories evolve, like so much of it gets integrated into my other practice. And there's something about soul collage, creating soul collage in community that has been calling to me lately as well. So I'm loving how this little piece, just adding that little row of stitching really added a lot to the piece. I'm thinking it would be fun to come in and do an applique stitch around the outside edges, but at least I have all the things put together here. And so I'm gonna just simply run this under a little bit. Just put a really simple little knot in there. And I want to grab my journal page. And I actually, this is a little bit shorter than the page, which is fabulous. So it's giving me, or I might trim it that way um, because I kind of like the idea of having the white frame uh, around the edges of the page. But just look how quickly it feels like this entire page came together. The story, I could call it done here. It's all together. I do want to add a, a kitty cat to the, the page. Um, but again, just love the story that emerges. I'm really loving these bright colors. Blues and oranges are my favorite color combo. And 
trying to decide which I have these two little cats I kind of like this kitty who looks like he's looking here so let's see I've got this plain bright green so I could do the kitty in the bright green but nope that's kind of maybe feeling too plain and maybe that kitty is gonna have some stripes from some of these patterns or I kind of yeah he's gonna fit nicely and I think that navy blue is gonna work best on the the page here so I'm just gonna cut some more of this and reminder to self to find my good fabric scissors I know they're just lost in the bottom of the box with all my fabrics so using a piece of the painty fabric that I created at the beginning we're gonna have a nice stripey cat on here and I grabbed so this is a Stabilo Marksall which you guys know I love these um, but this one is a white one so soul collage is an amazing process if you google it it's all one word soul collage and it is a process that was created by an amazing woman named Cena Frost and you basically create a deck of cards using map board five by eight map board most commonly and each card represents an aspect of yourself and so it's a great tool for just doing deep personal inner work there's a lot more exp explanation there's actually a suit with you know four like a deck of cards there's four different suits and four different types of cards but my favorite part is just the intuitive process of creating a card and then dialoguing with that card to see what the story is that emerges okay so I have this little kitty cat on here so we're gonna cut him out there's a great book that Cena wrote called soul collage evolving that's available on Amazon it's a great introduction she also has some great intro videos on YouTube about the process and the website is soulcollage.com and Marion I think you're a certified you got certified as a facilitator as well right I got certified way back in 2012 and I was one of the last classes that actually got to work with Sina Frost herself and she was one of the most delightful fun human beings that was so in touch with her inner jester her inner clown she was an amazing woman so she's no longer with us yeah and I loved the facilitator training and I love taking classes from other facilitators as well and it's definitely one of those processes I tend to be more engaged in in community these scissors are a little bit of a pain in the butt so I'm just cutting I'm sorry I'm not even doing that on camera I'm not that you need to watch me be cutting this little kitty cat out and that piece of fabric worked well to create a cute little stripedy kitty cat and I think I'll come in with some bright orange thread to get him attached to the page trying to see the pencil lines I usually keep I always keep a white pastel pencil chalk pencil around it's great for drawing on fabric and one of the things that Connor and I have so many ideas for what to do with all of his beautiful sacred circle designs but one of those things is to have some of them converted into embroidery kits because I know that I want to be able to embroider on some of them okay close enough 
So again, in the interest of time, I'm thinking I'm just going to do a quick running stitch and outline the kitty here on the page. I'm going to do that in bright orange to make him really stand out. And of course, I have lost my needle. So typical. So let me move this. There it is. Usually when I'm working on a multi-layered piece like this, I try to remember to just put my needle through the fabric so that I don't lose it. It doesn't roll away or one of my cats doesn't come and help. And I don't know where the cats are this morning. Usually they're down here climbing all over the table behind the computer and trying to get in my lap. And I have not seen either of them this morning. So they must be upstairs bugging my hubby instead. My mom tried to get me to learn how to sew. When I was a kid, she was amazing. She made beautiful machine embroidery. She made a lot of especially, you know, my formal dresses and things. And I just, I loved creating all kinds of things, but sewing was definitely not my favorite until I learned about hand stitching and applique and needlepoint. And it was one of those things that became a lost art. I never could learn to knit. I even had an aunt who was left-handed like me and tried to teach me to knit. And I could just never get the hang of it. I did do some crochet occasionally. but I definitely had a long love affair with needlepoint for a while. And when people started bringing back embroidery and this whole concept called slow stitching, you know, which is just basically abstract needlework, it reminded me how much I love the repetitive, mindful practice of just pulling that needle and thread through fabric or through paper. And when I started seeing people stitching on paper, it's like a whole new world opened up. And all of a sudden, I had all kinds of new ways of working in my journal that I hadn't even considered. And now I love the combination. OK, of course, because I mentioned the cats, now all of a sudden, they're both here. Does anybody else uh, love needle craft, knitting, crochet? Do we have any quilters in the group? So I'm going right through that paper, so it's going to help keep that paper even more solid here. Anybody else love embroidery? I think I mentioned yesterday Walmart has these, ouch, get my finger, poke. Um, really simple little embroidery kits and I've done a couple of them, a mandala one and a floral one because it helped me remember some of the fun stitches. So I actually have learned quite a few different stitches and I enjoy doing a chain stitch and a variety of different stitches and uh, but they're slow and they would be slow on camera, so I'm just using that running stitch today. And Judy loves quilter and bookmaking. That was one of the reasons I bought a sewing machine, because I saw people doing beautiful things with bookmaking and using sewing machines. And also my daughter really loves to sew. She's so much like her grandmother. She made her grandmother some wonderful placemats for Christmas. I need to find a thimble. I have so many. I have my, mentioned yesterday, I have my stepmother's sewing, sewing kit. I have some of her mother's sewing things and old patterns, you know, from needle crafting projects that were started, some old cruel projects. Um, and then I also 
have another great aunt's beautiful old sewing box. So I definitely have needles for a lifetime. I eventually gave all the knitting needles away. I think I, I kept two because I used them in my art making. Um, but I, it's fun to have these needles that who knows how old they are. So it's that idea of that quilting circle and that tradition and that I'm working with something that was used by other women's hands as well. And I think that we've lost something by not having, you know, sewing circles and places where women gather to craft together. I think it's one of the reasons I'm so, so passionate about what I do and I love retreats and gathering women together. So excited for my May retreat, which sold out right away, which is also very exciting. I only have room for nine people plus me, so it's going to be pretty intimate, but there's something magical about just gathering together. And look how cute he is. I love, so we've got stripes going one way, stripes going the other way. He's coming together nicely here. And I don't know why that little black kitty just looked like a he, but the other one with the heart was more girly. But a completely different way to create an art journal page starting with fabric as the background and then just having some fun with the just mindful stitching not worrying about the evenness of my stitches making them all the same size I love when they're kind of wonky and random adds to the playfulness of the page and if I start to get caught up in the perfection of it it loses that breathe and be happy sentiment and then that inner critic voice definitely wants to come out and express itself and that's not so fun all right, we almost have our sweet little kitty down here. I'm even thinking um, some white stitching on here would be fun as well. Hi, buddy. You need to come say hello. Good morning. Diego's coming to play along for a little bit. What? Okay, it's more challenging to stitch with a large kitty in your lap. This is my big boy. George is tiny, but this guy is ginormous. The last time we took him to the vet, the vet said, Diego's not allowed to gain any weight, and George is not allowed to eat any weight, any, lose any weight. And they are like Jack Spratt and his wife. Like, Georgia could care less about food, super picky. And Diego just thinks he actually never gets enough to eat and he's starving to death all the time. Yes, I know you're there. All right, the tail's just a little bit fussy in there. Almost done. And this is one of those pages where it would be easy to spend a week adding stitching to this page before it feels finished and ready to get put into my journal. And so it might be one I continue to work on over the weekend and have some fun playing with. Awesome, Judy. Thank you for joining me. Glad I got your creative juices flowing, maybe in a little bit different direction. 
I also love just adhering fabric. I've showed that before on an earlier video of just using pieces of fabric as collage to create texture on a page just like I would paper. But in this case, we're using the fabric as the painty background for the page. All right, I'm just going to finish that off. It's fun when I turn it over and there's that little bit of, you know, I can see the stitches are neater maybe than I thought they were. Because I'm adhering this down into a journal page, I don't want to have too many knots going. I want this to stay pretty flat in the page. So loving where this page is going this feels like it still needs a little bit more stitching. But I can see where it's going to go. And I love creating all these pages with lots of texture. And it might even be fun to let this just flow over onto the next page over here. And it might be Become part of whatever gets created on the next page. But this was all of a sudden a page with a story created with fabric and paper and a little bit of paint. And it feels like a good beginning to a story and a fun way to just bring a little more mindfulness both through the affirmation and through the slow stitching itself to the page. As always, thank you for joining me. Um, I will not be here on Friday this week, so I am going to give myself permission to maybe sleep in a little bit and do some private play in the studio. Thank you for joining me this week, and I will see you all back next Monday at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Be sure to hit like on this video so we can encourage other people to stop by and take a look as well. And I so, so appreciate those of you who are here joining me live always. Such a pleasure to spend this time with you and love having you participate in my creative journey. Thanks everyone and have a great rest of your day and a great weekend.